what to you is existentialism? So it's a hard question. I'm teaching a course on existentialism right now. You are. I am, yeah. Existentialism in literature and film, which is fun. Uh, I mean, the traditional thing to say about what existentialism is, is that it's a movement in mid 20th century, mostly French, some German philosophy. And some of the major figures associated with it are people like Jean-Paul Sartre and Camus, um, Simone de Beauvoir, maybe Martin Heidegger. But that's a weird thing to say about it because most of those people denied that they were existentialists. <laughs> yeah. And um, and in fact, I, I think of it as a, a movement that has a, a much longer history. So when I try to describe what the core idea of existentialism is, it's an idea that you find expressed in different ways in a bunch of these people. One of the ways that it's expressed is that Sartre will say that existentialism is the view that there is no God, and at least his form of existentialism, he calls it atheistic existentialism. There is no God, and since there's no God, there must be some other being around who does something like what God does, otherwise there wouldn't be any possibility for significance in a life, and that being is us, and the feature of us, according to Sartre and the other existentialists, that puts us in the position to be able to play that role is that we're the beings for whom, as Sartre says it, existence precedes essence. That's, that's the catchphrase for existentialism, and then you have to try to figure out what it means. Mm -hmm. What is existence, what is presence, and what does precedes mean? Yeah, exactly. What is existence, <laughs> what is essence, and what is precedes? And in fact, precedes is Sartre's way of talking about it, and other people will talk about it differently. But here's a way of, here's the way Sartre thinks about it. This is not, I think, the most interesting way to think about it, but it gets you started. Sartre says, there's nothing true about what it is to be you until you start existing. And still you till you start living. And for Sartre, the core feature of what it is to be existing the way we do is to be making decisions, to be making choices in your life, to be uh, sort of taking a stand on what it is to be you by deciding to do this or that. Mm -hmm. And the key feature of how to do that right for Sartre is to do it in the full recognition of the fact that when you make that choice, nobody is responsible for it other than you. So you don't make the choice because God tells you to. You don't make the choice because some utilitarian calculus about what, what it's right to do tells you to do. You don't make the choice because some other philosophical theory tells you to do it. There's literally nothing on the basis of which you make the choice other than the fact that in that moment, you are, you are the one making it. <laughs> you are a conscious thinking being that made a decision. So all of the questions about physics and free will are, are out the window. Yeah, that's right. If you were a determinist about the mind, if you were a physicalist about the mind, if you thought there was nothing to your choices other than the activity of the brain um, that's governed by physical laws, then there's some sense in which it would seem at, at any rate like um, you're not the ground of that choice. The ground of that choice was the physical universe and the laws that govern it. And then you'd have no responsibility. And so Sartre's view is that the thing that's special about us, used to be special about God, is that we're responsible for becoming the being that makes the choices that we do. Mm -hmm. And Sartre thinks that that's simultaneously empowering. I mean, it practically puts us in the place of God mm -hmm. and also terrifying because what responsibility? How can you possibly take on that responsibility? And he thinks it's worse than that. He thinks that it's always happening. Everything that you do uh, is the result of some choice that you've made, the posture that you sit in, mm -hmm. the way you hold someone's gaze when you're having a conversation with them or not, mm -hmm. the choice to make a note <laughs> when someone says something uh, or not make a note. Uh, everything that you do presents you as a being who makes decisions and you're responsible for all of them. So mm -hmm. it's constantly happening. 
And furthermore, there's no fact about you independent of the choices and actions you've performed. So you don't get to say, it's Hart's example, I really am a great writer, I just haven't written my great book yet. Mm-hmm. If you haven't written your great book, you're not a great writer. And so it's it's terrifying. It puts a huge burden on us. And, um, and that's why Sartre says, on his view of existentialism, human beings are the beings that are condemned to be free. Our freedom consists in our ability and our responsibility to to make these choices and to become someone through making them and we can't get we can't get away from that but to him it's terrifying not liberating in the positive meaning of the word liberating well so he he thinks it should be liberating but he thinks that it takes a very courageous individual to be liberated by it Mm -hmm. um nietzsche i think thought something similar i think sard is really coming out of a nietzschean sort of tradition but what's liberating about it, if it is, is also terrifying because it means in a certain way you're the ground of your own being. You become what you do through through existing. So that's one form of existentialism. That's a stark atheistic version of it. There's lots of other versions. But it's somehow um, organized around the idea that it's through living your life that you become who you are. It's not facts that are sort of true about you independent of your living your life. 